This presentation considers improvements to the alternator of the batteryless electric bike. The improvements involve additional magnets set in the rotors of the baseline machine. Possible application to other machines is touched on in the appendix. This is the alternator as shown in the previous videos. Two mild steel rotors, directly coupled to a small engine, carry rectangular magnets on their inside faces. Phase 1 coil has legs lying along radii, coinciding with magnet centres at peak output. Legs are one third of a pole pitch wide, wound with multiple passes of lit stranded wire. The winding always fills the gap between stators, except for a small clearance each side. Phases 2 and 3 will completely fill the remaining space. These are views at the magnet's internal and external radii. The first task is to calculate the pattern of magnetic flux passing directly through the legs. A free, downloadable finite element program is used to calculate the patterns. Scale drawings plus air, magnet and iron properties are entered into the program. Points are set in the air gap at 15 degree intervals over 90 degrees. Just press the button and the flux density is mapped. Numeric values can be read off at the set points. Averages of flux density may be plotted against rotor displacement. Both curves are smooth, with mainly third harmonic distortion, heaviest for the outside view. What about when the machine is loaded? Briefly, since the magnetic circuit is effectively all rare earth, distortion of the flux pattern is negligible, even at very high load current. For the same reason, winding inductance is very small, the response to extra magnetic forces is linear. Let's move on. The densities must also be averaged over the leg widths. This somewhat reduces the peaks and the distortion. The curves are then combined for an effective value along a magnet length, accounting for speed differences between inside and outside radii. According to flux cutting rules, the average voltage developed on all wires in a coil leg will be proportional to the height of this curve. Effective values for all three phases will be as shown here. Effective values for star connection are given by subtraction of phases. For example, phase 1 minus phase 3 is shown here. The result is a near-perfect sine wave due to total elimination of third harmonic content. Taking the highest absolute value of the subtractions gives a waveform proportional to the machine's loaded rectified voltage. The output resistance for each phase will be inversely proportional to the depth of the winding between rotors. We now have the means to compare the basic machine with its options. A suitable figure of merit is the square of the machine's loaded output voltage divided by its output resistance. As previously discussed, it gives a way to estimate ohmic dissipation in the output windings at any delivered power. Provided winding eddy loss has been eliminated, it is also a measure of power conversion efficiency. Calculation of relative figure of merit between the immediate options only requires the peak effective flux density and the winding depth, all other factors being common to the baseline design. Since dissipation is inversely proportional to the figure of merit, bigger is better. Normalized results for 1mm winding clearance shows an optimum rotor spacing around 7mm. Any wider would waste copper. We can now introduce the variance. The first has extra magnets inserted between those on the rotors. Their orientation should add to the flux through the coil legs. This shows only the flux density generated by the extra magnets. Most is shorted through the backing disc and does not traverse the coil. The benefit is thus limited. This is the resultant figure of merit. A more than expected 30% reduction in dissipation is deduced compared with the baseline. This option avoids flux wastage by deeper inserts passing between isolated steel plates. The total flux density map shows that flux wastage is essentially eliminated. The figure of merit approaches double the baseline, indicating around 45% less dissipation. The last option doubles the main magnet depth and has deep inserts. Wastage is present, but useful flux is enhanced due to the insert's greater depth. Dissipation should be some 60% lower than the baseline. 
It costs double the magnet mass compared with the baseline with inserts. It is notable that double depth without inserts appears inferior to the baseline with inserts.